Okay, let's talk about the uh, fence here that I'm going to build. Can't really tell in this picture, but those more look like uh, steel columns to me, maybe H columns. I'm going to make them out of wood. Down around the ball fields, those are real common. Uh, they use like old, uh, you know, power poles and cut them off, paint them white, run a cable through them. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, do that. Excuse the shakiness a little bit. This is what I did. I, I've got this 332nd dowel, which I used for my power poles in Chalkathi. And I cut them off to about 10 feet long, 10 scale feet uh, long. And not going to be that tall, obviously. Most of us are going to be in the ground. But since we're going into foam, may not be that solid. I decided to just cut them extra long. And you see a little pencil mark. That's at about... Uh, what is that? About 6 64 or 3 30 seconds, and that's where I drill the holes for the um, cable to go through. I do that using a, a pin vise. So I'll show you what that what I did next after I drilled all the holes. So after I had enough cut, I measured how long I needed to uh, cover the span. I decided I'd put them about 10 scale feet apart. And, you know, I didn't measure them. Uh, basically, this is the N scale Jeep Cherokee uh, put in there. So these are going to be down. You know, they're only going to stick up off the ground three or four feet tall. So if the car was there, you wouldn't see it. But um, I wanted to put them up kind of high to, uh, to help paint them. So you can see the drill in the back. I put tape around the drill bit. And I marked on the board 10 scale feet apart, and I just drilled down that depth, and it's not an exact science, and then I was able to place them in there. After that, I took some black thread, which hopefully you can see here, <laughs> probably not, uh, And but you know, if I, maybe if I, yeah, do that, you can see it. And I threaded through all the holes. Now to make it easier to thread the hole uh, through the holes, take the tip and put a little bit of super glue on it, and then just like about maybe a quarter inch, half inch, and then just I just ran my fingers over it real quick, made sure I didn't glue my fingers together. Uh, but what that does, it makes the tip stiff, and I could thread it through the holes, you know, pretty easy. At that point so now I've got them on this jig and I'm gonna paint them and again I'm gonna paint them white because that's what I typically what I see down around the ball fields is white and it shows up for people you know parking their cars you don't want them to be camouflaged obviously where people hit them so I'm gonna paint them white and the reason why I went ahead and put the cord through there is when you paint it I might thought well I might fill up the holes with paint because I'm just gonna brush paint them uh, so probably I will pull this thread back out and put a fresh piece of thread in because I imagine I'm going to get paint on the thread uh, doing this. So when I'm done, you know, I intend to leave them threaded when I install them because I think putting, leaning over the layout and not be able to see, uh, trying to thread these holes in would be a lot harder. So I'm just going to leave them all, you know, loose on a piece of thread and then you know take my ruler mark out 10 foot increments and put them in on the on the layout um, again that's foam they're going down into uh, I'll probably super glue them into place uh, and try to keep them all the relative the same height uh, so if I would have been smarter Again, I try to confess my mistakes to you guys. What I should have done is figure out the exact height I wanted them to be, drill the hole. You know, if I had to put the tape on the drill bit, you know, a little deeper, and that way these would have sat exactly the height I wanted them to be. Um, then I could have set them down that way I'd have known where to paint them and when I installed them I would 
know exactly where to put them. So actually, what I think I'm going to do is think I'm going to go back and do that. Just pull all these out. Just lean them back. You know, I can pull the thread through a little bit. You know, and I can just move the car out of the way. I can just take them out, lean them back, and I'll go back and drill those holes now. And I think that will make facilitating it on the layout a whole lot or installing it on the layout a whole lot better. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Again, this is, maybe someone's done this before, got a better way of doing it, but uh, I thought you might be interested in how I'm doing it anyhow. I moved the spool over so you could see it. So I tried to get it where they were sticking up about four feet. I still think that's too tall. Uh, when I install them, I may have them be about three feet. Just from my experience, you know, they're they're just two or three feet above the ground uh, in, in ball fields and things. So here's a tip. I brush painted these. Won't take too long to dry, but every couple of minutes, go through and pull the thread a little bit because you don't want that thread to dry in place. That might be a, a real pain. <laughs> If that happens so uh, just you know just take the thread and move it should pull through and again I'm gonna cut this thread off and re-thread it but I don't want paint in the holes uh, and I don't want this thread to be to dry in place like that so I'm just gonna sort of like set a timer <laughs> for about every five minutes I'm just going to work on something else and then I'll just come over here and and move the thread about a quarter inch or so and then when it's dry I don't think I'll have any problem taking it out. After I uh, painted everything um, and it dried, remember the thread was sticking out both ends so I just picked them up out of the jig and carried them over here. They were just swinging loosely. I took my scale rule, my end scale ruler, and I laid it down and I marked 10 foot. Actually, I just laid it down and I just took my drill and I still had the tape on the drill bit and I just drilled down every 10 foot all the way through there. And then I came through and I put them in place. Uh, after I put them in place, I tied a knot in the, this end of the thread, two or three, you know, thick, and then I just pulled it taut. Um, and then the other end I cut off, you know, you know after I, I super glued it first on both sides, and then I cut it off. Um, right now the thread is black. I may try to actually sort of dry brush the thread with a, a rust, you know, paint a little bit because I think that would, uh, I don't know if it'll actually even show up <laughs> if I do it, but I may try to do that. I did weather the uh, posts uh, with my Tamiya weathering uh, powders. I've got some of this uh, Tamiya weathering master, you know, snow and soot and rust and I use the snow obviously on the sidewalks and then I use the um, soot on on the uh, posts and I'll zoom in I don't know if you can actually see it or not any better that's as close as I can get with this gimbal um, so that's how I made the the fence um, I think it looks pretty good uh, Again, 330 seconds dowel, so that comes out to about 15 inches, I think, in end scale, um, which is, you know, about the size of a average uh, power pole. So I'm going to zoom out here, and I'm going to uh, sort of show you what I'm doing, and uh, I need to spend the rest of the day. I am going to start uh, working on some kits, but also my wife reminded me that I'm supposed to be sharing the... Uh, uh, space underneath the layout that's where her Apple computer is and I've pretty much had it junked up for a while while I've been working on the senior here so I need to clean that up today and do a better job of making that uh, accessible 
for her because uh, I've sort of reneged on our agreement. <laughs> so reneged, I don't know what, the, I don't know if that's an official word, but anyhow. Um, so let me, you can see where I've added some trees back in the, the back. Now Oak Hill, I don't know if this is something that happened after the railroad was sort of downgraded. They have a festival every Memorial Day called the Festival of the Flags. And now that the railroad is pretty much not being used, they actually set up in the grass between the railroad track and the Route 93, they actually set up concession, you know, trailers and stuff like that. And I assume people just walk down the railroad tracks. I don't know. I've never been to the thing. But they've started planting some trees along here. So I planted a little, you know, three little trees. This had a little bit of interest. I did go back and uh, tell you I didn't like the, the darkness of that. So I actually made that lighter. Uh, I've sort of weathered the roads a little bit, put down the grade crossing markers. I know someone is going to ask me who makes these grade crossing things, and I don't remember. Uh, if someone wants to, uh, if someone does ask, I'll go in and try to figure out who, uh, who made them. I don't have the package anymore. Uh, so they actually, these are dry transfers, uh, but they actually have a lot, like the lines, the lines are actually stickers. And, uh, so they've come in yellow and white. And uh, here's the railroad crossing signs. And that's what I used in Chalcothian and Douglas Avenue. Uh, so you just have to place them right, then rub them down. And uh, you see where I've, you know, put the streak where cars leak oil. Uh, right here is a little bit bigger streak where they'd be waiting on trains, sitting there for a few minutes. So just a little detail. Um, the kit's in the back. So that's, uh, this is a Walther's, I think it's a Merchant's Row 3. That's going to be my stand-in building there. And it'll come up next to the curb um, like that. Of course, it's going to have to sit on a piece of styrene. I'm thinking about down here just making this like a parking lot because there's no parking on that Route 93. And there isn't any parking along the Route 93 uh, in real life. There's no off-street parking along there. And then this is a Design Preservation Miniatures, or DPM, uh, building. I think I'm going to put it over here. Maybe you leave a gap for more parking. Um, and I've just got my depot sitting in place right now. And just like Boomer said, I didn't notice it, but I actually... This kit is a uh, uh, what, who is it that makes it fine fine scale miniatures? Who was that? Dang on it, down in Alabama. Really nice people. <laughs> uh, but I actually the semaphore kit was really nice, but it only came with one blade. So I made a blade, and sure enough, I broke it off. Yeah, you, know, you can see because the semaphore in Oak Hill had two blades, and I broke one of them off. So. That kid is just sitting there for this, uh, you know, picture, and then I'm just going back up on top of the, you know, uh, layout until I get ready to put it into place. Uh, I want to talk about the scrap loads. So, again, I talked about these. Now, they came painted. Everything is just painted rust. Real life, scrap dealers make money by getting junk and selling junk. The whole scrapyard looks like rust then they're not making any money because it's, it's not going anywhere so yeah you can see a old farm house or something that's got a bunch of rusty you know farm equipment around it because it's not moving but in a junkyard the stuff needs to turn over yeah there may be something in the back of the yard that has had been there a long time but for the most part this stuff needs to be loaded in flat cars or loaded in gondolas and shipped out so i've started painting it it's a pretty tedious job, uh, but and I'm not going to paint everything, but, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, you wouldn't see cars without an ounce of paint on them. 
you know, <laughs> like that. So I'm going to paint, you know, paint it to make it look better. Uh, one last thing, and then I'll end this because I'm talking too much. I have started accumulating stuff for my DTNI train. So I've been scouring eBay, and I've got a couple more things coming, a couple more hoppers coming. Now, I'm uh, Facebook friends with a guy whose father was a signal maintainer for the DTNI. Um, and he was, when he was in high school, he was in high school about when the DTNI was um, abandoning all this down in Jackson and down to the Ironton branch and all that. So he got to go with his dad a few times and, you know, saw some strange. So he's pretty knowledgeable. He remembers, uh, he lived in Jackson, Ohio. Uh, that's where he grew up. So he remembers this. So I asked him, I said, what? what did the DTNI trains mainly consist of? He said, well, they're mainly DTNI cars uh, because they were going south. Of course, they had no business at all on the B&O until they got to their own rails, but then they had some clay companies, uh, had a superior cement company, and a, um, there was a, oh, gosh, I can't remember the names of them, but there's uh, some clay companies down south that the, and they usually use their own cars to, to load them from. So I'm going to be trying to accumulate at least enough for a little DTNI run through train. Um, and uh, talk about one more thing, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll shut up and post this because it's turned into a really long video. I want to talk about these cabooses. So somebody, and I don't know what brand these are, they didn't come with boxes or anything. Um, got two of them together now they have some little issues because you you can see where you know like this window it's pretty obvious that this window has been patched and this window has been patched and when i first got them i thought ah you know they didn't do that great a job on them but you know i'm a little disappointed but the more i thought about that you know somebody went to the trouble to do this and you know i remember doing that 35 years ago and the first ones I came out with <laughs> I did weren't very good but I was still proud of them and I just sort of changed my whole perspective of them I mean I, I love them I'm gonna leave them like they are now there's a few places where the paint's dinged up a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and and try to touch that up but I really appreciate the fact that somebody tried to modify the stock cabooses to look more like uh, the real thing so uh, I, I love them. I'm not going to change a thing on them now. All right, enough talking. Uh, go ahead and post this. Like I said, I need to get to work. I'm going to, I need to build a little bit more sidewalk. Uh, I need to uh, start building those kits. Um, and about the middle of the week, I'll probably, I'll probably go back to Chalcothian and start <laughs> running some trains a little bit uh, since I'm not traveling to uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Good thing there's probably well uh, you know the hurricane all they're going to get in jackson tennessee is a bunch of rain which is what they don't need after that flood uh not that far away so all right everybody uh questions comments always welcome uh let me know what you think and uh everybody stay safe